Yeah, science and so is. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the one o'clock block on a given Tuesday. And I am joined, or <clears throat> I joined, <laughs> Pete McGinnis Mark, who is a, um, a professor at uh, SOAS, the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology, um, HIGP more specifically, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. He has been a host on and off on Think Tech for a long time. And we're starting an actual course today, um, which Pete is going to teach um what every tuesday at one o'clock this is very exciting stuff we are so happy to be uh, you know in this relationship with uh and so as an higp welcome to your show pete um thank you pete i'm really pleased to be here on my show um but seriously jay thank you and think tech as well um this is a really exciting opportunity um i want to take this afternoon this show today uh, to basically outline some of the uh, the goals and objectives uh, of my new series, uh, which I hope will be running on ThinkTech, um, well, for who knows how long, but certainly for this uh, semester, which started yesterday. And, and it really is quite an exciting opportunity because um, what we will be trying to do is to attract our new graduate students as well as postdocs and give them a lot of experience in talking live to the general public and to make the point that their research is relevant both to the state as well as uh, get some idea of what their career objectives are. Now, most of these students have not actually uh, appeared live on television before. And so ThinkTech is a really uh, friendly environment for which to do this. And in the world of Zoom, uh, after COVID, for example, more and more of our students are actually talking uh, to their colleagues on the mainland or internationally over Zoom, but they haven't really been interviewed. Um, typically, uh, students will go to a conference, either virtually or in person, and will present a science paper for perhaps 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, if they're lucky, they won't be asked too many hard questions. But what we want to try and do with this Think Tech series is actually to bring them up to speed in how do they talk to the, the general public. It's kind of like what we want them to do is present a 10 or 15 minute elevator speech. You know the, the, the phrase where you might have 30 seconds in an elevator to persuade your next door neighbor or the governor or whomever that what you're doing is relevant, uh, not only in terms of uh, the costs involved, but also uh, why it's important to the people of Hawaii. Well, we're extending that 30 second elevator speech to something like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and of course, you know, Jay, that you don't just appear live on a TV show for uh, half an hour without some preparation. So behind the scenes, part of the course, which I'll be uh, teaching, is to provide the students with some of the background information, you know, like slide preparation, what are the topics which uh, they think are most important uh, that the general public would like to hear. So this is a little different from typical think tech uh, shows. Um, it's going to be different because many of the guests, uh, this might be their first time on television and certainly the first time they've been interviewed over Zoom uh, on their material, but also trying to evaluate how they are performing as far as the material which they're presenting, um, even the graphics is going to be uh, a challenge for some of them because clearly we can't show a detailed uh, plot of data uh, and allow the audience to really understand it. So simplifying the work which they're doing for an audience who may never have heard anything about the kind of work that they're doing is something really new. And at SOST, uh, Margaret McManus and Dave Carl and a few others, uh, the department chairs really got excited about this concept, wherein you know, the students themselves start to get the experience of presenting their material online. So we we're excited about it, um, delighted that ThinkTech thinks this is a good thing uh, for our community to hear about. So I'm going to stop and let you, if you've got any questions, and uh, then I'll go into more of my post-amble.
Mm-hmm. Well, Pete, I, you know, I'm really about this. Uh, you know, we've been doing talk shows for actually almost 20 years, radio and video like this, streaming. Uh, and this is really special to have a relationship with SOWEST and university and um, to have to have the crucible of what you do there come in um, into our content, into our stream, so to speak, and to share that with not only uh, the university, but with the public. Yeah. Um, this is so valuable on all ends of it. You know, we made a movie uh, last year about climate change. Uh, Chip Fletcher was uh, in the movie, um, and it was the relationship of climate change and the environment to COVID and how right. they, they, feed, they feed off to each other. And one of the things that we learned from a number of the, I call them faculty, that were in this movie was that science has changed. And I would like your thought about this. Science, science, you know, used to be um, all sort of within the science, within the scientific community. But now it appears, and this is especially mm, clear in, in the context of COVID itself, um, that scientists also must get out there. They must talk to the public. They must educate the public. Uh, for my, you know, for my uh, purpose, it's a, it's a matter of um, part of the training of a scientist these days. If you want to be a scientist, you also have to be able to speak to the public, educate the and, community. Yeah, you agree yes, with me? indeed. Yeah, I, I, and you know, with all the uh, issues over fake news and who do you believe uh, over COVID or climate change or whatever. Um, but Jay, uh, maybe I can just direct the conversation in a little different direction because we've talked about SOAST and I'm betting that most of the audience really don't know what SOAST is. So Eric, if you can put up the first slide, I think it's actually worth just telling people a little bit. SOAST stands for the School of Ocean, Earth Science and Technology. It's one of the units at University of Hawaii at Manoa. But I've put on some of the the basic background information. Like, you know, there's over 240 people who work at SOAST. Uh, In addition, there's over 570 professional and technical staff. We've got nearly 190 graduate students, some of whom are working on their master's degrees, Many, however, are working on their PhDs. In terms of the budget that we bring in, this is about $120 million a year endeavor. So, you know, we bring in, SOS brings in about a third of all of the federal dollars to the University of Hawaii. So this is a big initiative and trying to convey to the general public what exactly SOS contributes to the state of Hawaii and scientific knowledge in general is one of the objectives of this particular course. And having our graduate students actually take the lead and you know, I'll be quizzing them uh, both before the show on why it's important as well as um, what exactly their contributions are gonna be. That's the kind of thing which I hope to get out of this series. And Eric, can we go on to the the second slide, please, which basically just gives you some idea of the breadth of the studies which are conducted at SOST. And you mentioned Chip Fletcher, who is our new interim dean. Uh, Brian Taylor has retired. So there's aspects of climate change. But if you just look at the diagram, we've got oceanographers, we've got marine biologists, we've got atmospheric scientists. Um, We worry a lot about um, uh, climate change, but also geology, natural hazards, for example. Hawaii um, has numerous natural hazards, be they tsunamis or earthquakes or volcanic eruptions or whatever. Um, There's also uh, a, a very vibrant space program. You know, we're lo- we launched our own satellite from the space station back in uh, 2020. Um, we're sending another one up later this year. Our former graduate students fly spacecraft or instruments around the moon or drive them across Mars. So, you know, SOST as a unit is incredibly successful. 
we're ranked um, somewhere in the top 20 worldwide for some aspects of the work which is conducted. And I don't feel that the community, the people in Hawaii, actually realize what a gem SOST is uh, here in our home state. So that's one of the things which we really need to figure out. Now, this communication we're talking about, the communication of science, is it's not only important to the, as I said, the scientific community and the public, it's important to the legislature, it's important to policymakers, it's important to granting agencies everywhere in the country, and for that matter, the world. It's important for the global scientific community so that they know who you are, who So West is. Um, yes. it's, it's really a, 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 fa a fabulous idea. The other thing I was going to say is that, you know, back in the old days, um, scientists would go out and they would look and search and research for their science. When you're talking about um, the Earth, um, the things that SOAS uh, specializes in. Um, but now uh, you don't have to go out. It comes to you. Uh, climate change brings it to you, and we are we are going to have more issues of more public interest going forward than we have ever had before. And scientists need to tell us what is going on, connect the dots, and actually predict what will happen next. That's Absolutely. the problem about science uh, about science and climate change. And, and, and let's Eric move on to slide three because Jay's prompted the next issue. Uh, on some of the relevance, all right, and, and here's just four examples uh, where we're looking at, say, the uh, ocean as a food source, or we're looking at climate change. I drove around to Kahuku uh, over the weekend, and the amount of beach erosion which is taking place uh, just north of Kanioi Bay, you know, how are we going to deal with um, the degradation of the coral reefs, the loss of the infrastructure for the road system. Um, we look at things like uh, ocean debris in terms of how that affects some of the marine mammals, as well as, say, I mentioned some of the, the natural hazards. The diagram at bottom right shows the distribution of earthquakes, uh, which can generate tsunamis. But we've got people in our ocean research engineering department, for example, who are trying to implement new methods of predicting when tsunamis are actually going to be dangerous. We know when the earthquake occurs, but we've got perhaps only a few hours before um, a warning would be issued, say, by the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, uh, even the heavy rain which we had here in Hawaii over the last month, you know, the climate modelers, the atmospheric scientists, they all contribute to things which are directly relevant to you and I. And it behooves uh, both the professors at UH as well as their students to get out and tell the general public that you know, we're doing great things and you're going to need our help even more as uh, the years go by. Yes, I, I predict you'll be talking to the public more and more. So this is a great program to sort of get into that. Um, but, you know, it's a course. And I would like to spend a few minutes with you about the nature of a course here uh, on, on Think Tech and at SOAS. And, and I know that you're a kind and gentle avuncular professor, Pete, but, but how will it work from your end? And should the students out there who are called upon to present, should they be intimidated? Uh, no, I don't work by intimidation. Um, I, I cajole and, and try and pressure the students. Um, the way that the whole course, as you describe it, uh, will work out, it, it's probably not going to be given for credit. Uh, at least not this semester. Um, we only started planning this uh, about a week ago. And so trying to give the students actual credit is unlikely, but um, it will take the form of a weekly seminar um, and the students are very familiar with seminars. And the key difference between a, a regular s seminar that perhaps the faculty as well as the students would uh, join in would be that I would spend perhaps an hour before um, each one of the shows talking to uh, a particular student, if she's uh, sort of first time on the air, 
clearly there's the preparation work. So we've had courses before at the university on public speaking, but they have been focused almost entirely on how do you go to a science conference and put your research in the best possible format for other research scientists to appreciate. Here it's going to be different. It's yeah, we're not interested in the eighth decimal point of your measurements or what you're coding your computer programs in. It's primarily to be uh, a, a generalist. And I found in the past, like when I did the previous shows on think tech, that probably the most helpful for the participant was the preparatory work. So you sit down with an individual and say, this is how, um, you know, a 30 minute show should be put together. Um, and then after the show, you sort of have a, a, an individual debrief. What I'm hoping is that as with the normal university seminars, as this becomes better known on campus, we will have many other students sort of logging on and they will uh, be able to not only watch the shows, but also provide uh, their own uh, colleagues with critiques during real time. So that's just like uh, a, a regular um, seminar that we would have on campus. As we get started, it's obviously um, we're bootstrapping the way that the, the course of this endeavor uh, is put together. Um, it might well be that, say, for the first two or three weeks, we'll only have uh, one of the students giving a presentation and I'll be quizzing them on the relevance but as say we enter into february what i'm really hoping is that we will have less of the the student giving the talk but then we'll have online comments um hopefully constructive comments about you know i didn't understand this or tell me more about why your work on say uh, water on the moon is relevant to people of hawaii or something like that yeah, it's a learning process, even for you and I, Jay, that we don't quite know um, how this is going to work out. I think it's a really exciting concept. It, it's the sort of thing which the students will benefit from, even if we fail. Um, it will be um, something that in the past they have not heard. And with all of the, the social distancing over COVID, for example, we're not giving the students enough opportunities to interact either with their peer group or with the faculty. This is a new way. Um, they're much more comfortable than you and I working with Zoom. So we'll see how it goes. It could be great. Well, we, you know, we're treating it on our end as a webinar. It's a, it's a 30 minute webinar every week, uh, which means that you can take questions easily and the questions are reported on a, a special chat page for you. And you yeah. can then pose as the host, you can pose those questions to, you know, the students who are presenting. So it's very open and you can rewrite the questions, extend the questions, modify the questions in any way. But you can you can have a regular uh, exchange with the public or anyone who is permitted, who is registered on the webinar. Um, that's the one thing. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, we, we, will, we will put this out there. Uh, ThinkTech has eight uh, platforms um, of various kinds and, you know, descriptions. And when we take a webinar like this, we'll put it out there so that it, it, is, um, it is into the community. It's, uh, it goes not only to UH, but to the public and for that matter, to the world. Uh, what's more is it's catalogable. Uh, that means if somebody wants to find out about a given subject that you have discussed on the show, they just need a keyword and they'll find it. So um, it, it is a scientific resource in many ways um, to the public, not only here, but elsewhere. And, and finally, I wanted to ask you this, Pete. What does a viewer hope to achieve here? What, what do you see as the, as the takeaway, the, you know, the content value to a viewer who comes on and watches one of these shows, a member of the public? Is it going to be at his level? Um, yes, the intent is certainly uh, to 
make the information understandable to the lay person. Now, I'm not quite sure um, if we'll hit the mark every time, but certainly it's not going to be a detailed scientific description. That, that's not my goal. And uh, in meeting with the students beforehand to prepare uh, their material, that's one of the first things I'm going to impress on them, that you, know, you cannot just present a science talk. You have to show relevance. But what, what the lay person might get out of it, first of all, recognition that SOST is a world-class institution that brings in not only an awful lot of money to the state, but also provides immense amount of technical information to either state legislatures, some of the advisory boards, and that sort of thing. So um, I doubt very much if most people in Hawaii recognize the sort of work which is done at SOST. Um, from a, a general point of view, I think um, SOST and the university has not done a very good job in the past at reaching out to the general public at their level of understanding or interest. So uh, I hope that the, the whole series will actually make it um, much more relevant. I actually put um, slide number six, Eric, we'll, we'll, if we can just put on the last slide and I'll talk over that. Um, basically, what are the goals for this series? Well, yeah, I'm gonna interview a student each week uh, and that's gonna give them experience in public speaking. I want to hear about their research and also hopefully hear about the excitement they have about the research. Why commit to a four-year PhD if you're not excited about it? Um, but they have to explain the relevance of their work to the general public. That's the, the key thing. Um, and basically, I, Eric, I can't read the, my own slide right now, <laughs> if you can go, thank you. Uh, students, should also have some idea of what their career goals are. Why are they doing this? Apart from having lots of fun now, hopefully we can convince the viewer that our students are going to get good jobs, but hopefully stay in Hawaii and the high paid jobs. And finally, the general public needs to learn much more about activities at Manoa so that you know when the ledge decides that they're going to cut Manoa's budget again, everybody will stand up and say, well, no, because we want to know about climate change. We want to worry about earthquakes and look at all of the exciting things which are being done for the benefit of our local kids, as well as kids from the mainland. Or I say kids, but you know, young scientists more than anything else. So you know, we're not sure how this is going to work. I'm not certain who's going to appear next week. I will be here. Um, but you know, it, it's a general effort. And I'm also hoping, Jay, you mentioned that you know, this is an interactive Zoomathon or whatever. When I gave the other series on, on Think Tech Research uh, at Manoa, um, there wasn't any, any interaction between the, the audience and the presenters. I think that's a really exciting development for think tech to actually utilize the internet or Zoom so that you can gauge the reaction from people. And I too will be sort of promoting uh, the, the links for this show in the hope that many people will tune in. Some will be from the university. Some I hope will be lay people who are just generally interested. And that's how you engage uh, our community with what we're doing. So try it and see. Well, we speaking for myself and, uh, and the staff at ThinkTech, we want this to work and we'll make every effort to have it work, not only because uh, this is what we do, um, but because SOAS is a special, a special organization for us. We've been you know, dealing with it. We uh, admire it for years and years, and we admire its faculty and its work, and it, it, more and more relevant, more and more important. Um, but at the same time, though, it seems to me that you know, uh, the university could do more of this. And if this works, and I'm knocking wood that it does, I, I believe, I believe <laughs> that it will. 
<laughs> I would make every effort to have that happen. But, but you know, this could be useful for other departments, um, other, other parts of the university, other campuses, other faculty, other students, yeah. other programs. And uh, I would like to see it go beyond that, don't you think? It's hard that you say that, Jay, because I've already had discussions with the director of our C Grant College, which has supported students not only within SOST, but in uh, a variety of other departments across campus. And, and yes, you know, this is a test program uh, in the literal sense, but I'm hoping it would actually be expanded to other departments across campus. You know, we're, we're, Believe me, I'm going to be trying to push this as much as you. So uh, hopefully it will succeed. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, you know, a few years ago, there was all this uh, rage about uh, MOOCs. Remember um, um, those large online courses, massive, massive yeah. online courses. <laughs> they were emanating from various places on the mainland. Um, I don't think Hawaii got you know, into it very deeply. I always uh, thought that if Hawaii is going to do it, Hawaii has to do it in its own way, its own style, the Aloha style, call it. Mm -hmm. And I think this is exactly what this is, or could be a MOOC, uh, where ultimately people on the mainland watch it. Right. Well, it's different from a MOOC because hopefully you've got a live uh, presenter quizzing the students, but doing online classes in this manner, um, you know, it may not work for uh, a 600 level volcanology course, for example, but this communications aspect, we, we teach classes on writing proposals, on presenting material at conferences. This is the same kind of deal. So um, trying new methods for our students' benefit, I think is a really good idea. Yeah. So let's turn to you for a minute, Pete. <laughs> you have been a fixture at uh, SOEST for uh, about 200 years now. Um, at least, and, yes. Yeah, at least, yeah. Uh, and I wonder, you know, what motivates you? What gives you the passion here? What are you seeking and why? Um, well, first of all, I, I, I'm a, a lifelong supporter of SOEST. I, I think it's a wonderful organization. And it has given me a great career doing what I enjoy, which is studying volcanoes on Mars. Um, but the, the more general aspects of it, um, I, I just feel, you know, this is what a faculty member should be doing. Um, you, you can't just present um, the same material in the same manner every year and expect the students to be excited. You know, times are changing. Um, with COVID in particular, we have to think of new ways of helping the students broaden their, get a better experience. So it, it's, yeah, it's in my DNA. I, I'm excited about my own research and I'm excited to find out why students are excited, to, whether it's a marine biologist or it's an atmospheric scientist or an engineer. You know, it's neat. Find yeah. out as much yeah. as you can. So that's what fires me up. Yeah. You're a scientist, but you're you're also a teacher. It's a, an important combination, I think. That's you. Well, um, you. Can you also talk for a minute about the founding group that put this together? You mentioned Dave Carl's uh, name a little while ago, and there are others too. Can you, can you talk about the way it came together, the seminal group, the seminal or organizational arrangements? Uh, a simple answer would be no. Um, because it was uh, an idea hatched by the department chairs. We have four different departments uh, within SOST. They recognized the need for, um, in essence, a school-wide seminar series, um, and they uh, decided that I would be an appropriate person. You know, Dave Carl, of course, has a long-term association with ThinkTech, and, and I think he had something to do with uh, uh, me being uh, encouraged to do this. <laughs> so I, I, I do not know why the department chairs in abstract sciences uh, ocean research engineering, earth sciences, and oceanography, they all decided this is a good thing to do. I, I, I was not in that discussion. 
Well, we're just about out of time, Pete, but I want to ask you one last question. Um, to the extent that people look at this introductory show and try to get the flavor of what you're about to do um, and uh, maybe consider, you know, uh, watching it on a regular basis um, or for, for that matter, um, become a student, participate in the show itself. Um, and in any event, um, become more aware of SOAS. Uh, what is your message to them? What would you like them to think about as a takeaway from our discussion uh, about this, this great possibility, this great adventure we are embarking on? Yeah, it, it is a great opportunity. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn at a more basic level what is done within SOAS. Um, it's cross-discipline, that's the intent, so you will have oceanographers hearing about geology or an atmospheric scientist build, uh, wants to know about building a widget to go in a submarine or something like that. So it, it's going to be broad-based, it's going to be uh, focused on the students, um, and we're trying new techniques to basically enhance the educational experience at UH Manoa. That's great. That's really an important statement. Thank you so much, Pete McGinnis, Mark. It's so great to talk My to you pleasure. and to have you on the show. Thank uh, you very soon. much, Jake. It's uh -huh. going to be great. Thank yeah. you. I love it. Yeah.